Good morning, Garden Homes. Welcome to Christ Light, Lesson 2 today. Today we're going to talk about the birth of John the Baptist, and we're going to try to answer the question, what did God teach Zechariah? If you remember from last lesson, uh, Zechariah was visited by Gabriel, the angel, told him that he and his wife would have a child. Zechariah was pretty slow to believe that and was taking away his ability to talk. We'll see today how God fulfills his promise of giving him the child and how Zechariah responds to everything. Today we'll be in the book of Luke. Um, as we move to our first question, the first question is, what promise did God keep? Um, we'll be reading verses 57 to 66 to answer the question in this section. Verse 57 begins like this. When it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy, and they shared her joy. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him after his father, Zechariah. But his mother spoke up and said, No, he is to be called John. They said to her, there is no one among your relatives who has that name. When they made signs to his father to find out what he would like to name the child, he asked for a writing tablet, and to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, His name is John. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue set free, and he began to speak, praising God. All the neighbors were filled with awe, and throughout the hill country of Judea, people were talking about all these things. Everyone who heard this wondered about it, asking, What then is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand was with him. A couple interesting points as we read this first section. Number one, I love the neighbors and the relatives. They're happy for Elizabeth and Zachariah that they have a child. So often today, we're not very good at being happy for other people. Something good happens to, they win the game, they get a present for their birthday, and, and we're filled with jealousy. We, we have to learn to have a heart like God, and we have to learn to be happy um, for other people. It comes to naming the child, and both Elizabeth and Zachariah listened to what Gabriel had said, and said, you're supposed to name the child John. That surprises everybody, of course, because in their culture, they always named him after the father or at least a relative. That's how you kept the family line going. Um, in biblical times, it was based off your first name. Last name thing is kind of a more recent invention. So like today, we carry on our last names with the families. In biblical times, it would be the first name. So that's why they're really surprised where you all of a sudden add this John in there. When Zechariah writes on that tablet, his, he's able to speak again. And what's the first thing that he does? He praises God. He wasn't bitter at God. He wasn't angry. He had gotten a consequence of not being able to talk for nine months. And when he finally gets that privilege back to speak, he praises God, realizing that, number one, he deserved the consequence he got. But number two, God still deserves to be praised because he was given the birth of a child. You can see the answer to the first question, what promise did God keep? It says, God gave Zechariah and Elizabeth a son, just as he has promised. And we can be filled with comfort too, knowing that God has made a lot of promises to us that he still keeps. Question two, what other promise had God kept? Continuing on in verse 67. His father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said through his holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to rescue us from the hand of our enemies." and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. We see the power of the Holy Spirit giving Zechariah the ability to prophesy, to be able to speak the future and to be able to give praise back to God. He's also starting to talk about what God is going to do and how God is going to use his son John to be able to get a lot of these things fulfilled for him. 
Um, you can also see God always understanding the big picture. One of the reasons Zechariah lost his ability to speak is so that when he was given his ability to speak back, people were amazed by that. You saw in the previous section, as soon as he started talking, people spread that word throughout all of the countryside. All around they started talking about what was happening and they had high hopes for what John was going to be. And so God used the hardship in Zechariah to be able to say, this is going to help his son in the future be able to spread the word because people are looking to him to do great things. It's a great reminder for us as we go through some difficult things. God understands that future and so he might be putting us through some difficult times now so that we are prepared for the future he wants to see happen. Question two was, what other promise had God kept? Zechariah prophesied that God had sent the Savior just as he had promised. And so Zechariah and John are getting the world ready for the coming Savior. The final question we'll take on for today is, what would this child do for the promised Savior? So now we'll get into the specifics as Zechariah continues to prophesy to see what John the Baptist is all going to do. Verse 76, And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, and he lived in the wilderness until he appeared publicly to Israel. So the next few verses, Zechariah talks exactly what John's going to do. He's going to prepare a way for the coming Savior. That sound, sounds great until we realize what that means. To prepare people for forgiveness, you need to tell them they're sinful. That's not always an easy thing to do. In other words, John the Baptist is going to preach a lot of law to people, convict them of their sin, tell them what they're doing is wrong, and that they need to get ready for their Savior to forgive those sins. It will not be an easy task. In fact, it will eventually cost John his life as he boldly prophesies that. How is he able to keep going with that difficult task? Verse 80 tells us he's strong in the Spirit. It's exactly what we need to be. We need to be in God's Word. And through God's Word, that Holy Spirit is going to use that Word to create strong faith in our hearts. Satan wants to overwhelm us with all the problems that come into our lives. We need to every day make sure we are in that Word so that we have that strength too. Question three, answer was, Zechariah prophesied that his son John would prepare the way for the promised Savior. What a bold task. It's a task that we have today to do as well. Continue to get the world ready. Not because the Savior is coming, but because the Savior has come. He's already won salvation on the cross for all of us. And now we get ready for his second return. Going back to the truth of the day, we look and we see what God's plan for John the Baptist was. And the answer is, God taught Zechariah to trust all his promises. Above all, his promise to send a Savior. And we can just take out Zechariah's name and put our name in there. We need to learn to trust all of God's promises as well. But there's a lot of difficulties that come in this world. And no matter what difficulties we face in this world, we know that we have a Savior. He's died on the cross. He's given us the forgiveness of sin. Heaven waits for us. And we gloriously spread that message until that time comes. Let's close it with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we praise you for keeping your promise to Zechariah, for sending a son. We praise you for using that son to prepare the way for Jesus. We praise you for Jesus, who has prepared a way for us for heaven. Keep us forever focused on those promises that you continually keep through all your scriptures, and you will continue to keep into the future till one day you fulfill the promise of coming back to take us to heaven with you. We ask for this strength through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.